Welcome to the, this week's episode of Food Again. Uh, last week was really long. We talked all about the wheat harvest. It was kind of a long episode. So this week, I'm just going to give you a tour of the garden and where we stand at midsummer. You'll see a lot of great looking stuff and you'll see a lot of weeds too. So uh, a lot of people who want to come for tours and to see what we're doing here, um, growing our own food for the year. Uh, and I know that that's not always possible due to present circumstances. So um, I thought I'd just kind of put together a quick garden tour this week and show you what's going on. So right off the bat, uh, here off the back porch, uh, we have a lime, a lemon, and a bonsai tree. And then over here, uh, we've got mint, sweet potatoes, uh, these are parsley, and a couple weeks ago I did a video where I mulched all of this, and you can see there's no weeds growing back, which is super nice. Um, and then over here, uh, we have cilantro, and that's already starting to make um, heads on the on the plant, so we'll be able to harvest a whole bunch of the, uh, of the spices. And back here are tomatillos, and I've never grown tomatillos before, but I'm actually really excited about them. Uh, they're starting to bear fruit right now, so we had some last night in our burritos, and they were really good. Um, and then over here, we've got uh, zucchini, and these are German Johnson tomatoes. They're a brandy wine type heirloom. Uh, down here, I've got a little bit of basil. I have basil kind of spread out throughout the yard, and then a bit of lavender. So that's, that's what we have going on in this really, this is one of our few, it doesn't look like it right now, but this is one of our few full sun areas. Um, and so that's why I have a lot of these heat loving things, as well as a lot of things that we use in the kitchen all the time, the cilantro and the parsley. I'm also continuing to thresh uh, the wheat that I harvested last week. And so this is about half of the straw that I've generated so far. Um, pretty soon, as I start to shut down some of the beds, um, as we approach fall, um, I'm gonna mulch them with a lot of this straw. So this straw will become the ground covering for next year to keep the weeds down in the beds. So right here we have a gooseberry plant that got us about two quarts this year. Um, and this is the fence that leads into our garden. So let's, uh, let's head right into here. So this is our main garden grow bed area. Um, over here I have some onions that need to be uh, pulled because the tops have died. Um, and then we've also got rhubarb over there that's doing pretty well. Forgive all the weeds, I was just weeding yesterday. One of my continual tasks, I just haven't gotten the weeds picked up. I like to let them uh, rot a little bit before I put them in the compost pile. Um, over here, this, these two beds are problematic because of the walnut tree over here. And I try and plant things that supposedly will grow under juggalone or under the, under the walnut uh, chemicals that get let out, but uh, it, it, it never really works out that well. Um, I have a whole bunch of lettuce, uh, both Tom Thumb and Roche de Ver that have gone to seed. I've got a couple volunteer potatoes. I had planted melons here, but they're nowhere to be seen. Um, and then we have another potato patch here. I think these are superior, um, and so we're waiting on those uh, for the fall. I've got some kale that's gone to seed and then re-sprouted, uh, so I'm going to collect those seeds. Um, just, I have four or five different types of kale. I don't know what any of them are. Uh, this is a crinkly leafed one um, in the potato patch. And then right up over here, this until yesterday was my pea, uh, was my pea bed, but I planted some uh, broccoli in here uh, a couple months ago, and now the broccoli has kind of uh, taken over as I have uh, pulled out the peas. So now this will be a coal bed until, until the fall, and hopefully we'll be getting uh, a later harvest of, of broccoli from this bed. And then over here we have, uh, well we had fava beans, but I pulled most of those. Um, and then we also have some cucumbers. These are uh, lemon pepper. These are salt and pepper cucumbers. They're yellow, um, but usually they're white with black spots on them. I'm letting these go to seed so that I can replant them next year. I'm having some sort of wilt going on here, and I don't know if it's in the soil or if it's due to uh, cucumber beetles, so that's something I'm going to have to explore. Um, and moving along, we've also got another defunct pea bed that I need to weed, as well as some kohlrabi that's looking pretty good. Everything's starting to wilt because it's starting to get hot out here, and so everything kind of wilts down uh, during the middle of the day, and then resurrects itself as soon as the shade comes. This is a not full sun area, 
Um, a couple of these beds are full sun. So these would be full sun um, and these, but those are partial shade just because of the high trees we have around here. It's one of the challenges uh, we deal with. I have to uh, think pretty carefully about what goes where uh, because I want to rotate them, number one. And number two, I want to make sure the tomatoes and the other heat loving things uh, really have uh, a lot of heat. So why don't we step over here and we'll go into the greenhouse. So believe it or not, this is a greenhouse. It actually goes down into the ground. And the idea there is in the winter, um, all that thermal mass of the earth will store heat and then release it at night, keeping it uh, warmer longer. Um, on the back side, we have a whole pile of soil that was dug out of the wallapini or the greenhouse in the ground. Um, and I have a couple grow beds up there. I grew uh, lettuce, uh, again, freckles and uh, roche de ver lettuce. Um, I also have a couple kale pots here outside. Those will go get mulched and then go into the greenhouse in the winter to keep them growing and giving us greens all winter long. So let's head on down. So the greenhouse is a bit of a construction zone right now. I apologize for that. Uh, but what I have here are um, some shelves where I do a lot of my starts and these are a lot of our late season crops. So I've got beets, uh, radishes, lettuces, there's some peas, uh, bok choy, there's some uh, more kohlrabi, a different variety than we saw outside. That outside I believe was Vienna white and this is Azure Star. Uh, uh, over there we've got cabbage, we've got Copenhagen Market, up here we've got broccoli, um, some more uh, late flat Dutch cabbage and some red express cabbage uh, as well as some more um, peas just to really get a jump start on the fall growing season. Um, these will go into beds that I'm going to be clearing out in the, in the meantime. And then over here, this is one of my favorite features that we have in here. This is a uh, mass heater. And so what happens is, um, it's got a small firebox, and I burn a real small fire in here, um, just an armful of wood, uh, and then it um, goes up and heats this entire thing and then overnight this dissipates heat into the space so in the middle of winter it can keep it above freezing in here um, and it keeps this is a much more efficient system for trapping heat inside rather than say a wood stove or a fireplace that sends a lot more heat up the chimney and out of the building um, so this is going to be one of the ways in which we keep all of our um, vegetables uh, growing throughout the winter now that we're out of the greenhouse, we can see some other things that we're growing. We have some zucchini that's kind of uh, died here, um, as well as some Red Express cabbage uh, that's being overtaken by weeds. And I'm gonna work on that over the next, uh, next little bit. Uh, we have some pumpkins growing here, uh, some volunteer potatoes from my potato plot last year. Um, in here, I've got some more uh, cabbages. Um, and then here's broccoli that's, uh, that's ready to be eaten. Uh, so we're gonna be eating that this week. Uh, we had radishes there, they've gone to seed. And then over here, we've got our more formal raised beds. And they look completely overgrown, overgrown but I mean, that's the point. Uh, these are, this is all potatoes. These are early, <laughs> uh, these are early potatoes. These are German fingerlings. Unfortunately, they're growing the best out of all my potatoes, so I haven't harvested yeah. them yet. Where I have uh, old, other winter potatoes that have already, uh, the tops yeah. have died. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm having to dig those. Uh, back here I have uh, uh, cabbage and more uh, Azure Star uh, kohlrabi. This bed was garlic until a few weeks ago. I pulled all the garlic and now I'm going to have to plant uh, the and the beets that you saw in the greenhouse are going to go in here. There's carrots in that last bed there. Now if we go back to the other side where we just were, over here I've got another bed of potatoes that have pretty much died out. I had some potato beetles this year, but not, not too many. Um, and then behind that, I've got um, squash. And then behind that, I have another bed that was supposed to be beets, but the beets never really germinated for some reason. Uh, I see a couple beets in there, but for the most part, uh, that bed has been taken over by weeds. So that's yet another one I have to turn back uh, to be ready for some fall crops. So I'll be working on that soon. Um, and just down here, um, which is just off the camera view. Um, I've got a whole bunch of carrots. These are some, um, some light yellow carrots. Um, and over there, under some black uh, ground fabric, I've got more sweet potatoes. So we're trying to grow um, as much as we can this year. I'm excited to have sweet potatoes again. And then if we head back here, past the carrots and sweet potatoes and more brassicas, um, we hit the end of the beds on this side. 
Um, and here we have bee balm and some other things. Uh, but for the most part, uh, this hasn't been turned into beds yet. Uh, partly because there's a big spruce tree here that shades this area. So this is kind of the last area I want to turn into, um, into beds. But if we go a little farther back, uh, we'll see where we keep the chickens. So just on this side of the fence uh, is where the chickens are currently because um, the chickens have different zones that they can be in. And this is where we keep a lot of our perennials. So we've got uh, early apple trees, these here uh, under me, these are currants. Uh, we've got grapes along the fence line. Um, and the, uh, the chickens are allowed in here once the berry season is over. We've got strawberries back there and they would destroy those. Uh, raspberries, all these different uh, berries in this area. Um, once the berry season is over, then we let the chickens in and they really uh, take down a lot of the, veg the vegetative matter we don't want, weeds and things like that. This is our rooster, Sid. He's a barred rock. We've got a couple of different barred rocks. Some leghorns. And some I don't know what mixes. As we make our way down the garden path, we've got our um, San Marzano tomatoes over here. Uh, they're a paste tomato, so we make a lot of tomato paste. Uh, the ones up front, again, were brandy wine. Those were more for crushed tomatoes and eating fresh. Here we've got uh, more Red Express cabbage. Guess what we're eating a lot of this winter? Potatoes and cabbage. Uh, here we have a whole bunch of uh, beans. These are bush beans uh, for shelling. So we're going to eat a lot of dried beans as well. Growing in and amongst the beans um, are some butternut squash. Um, and then we have different uh, examples of mulch back here uh, because these I weeded and I mulched uh, with some rotted blue stem uh, straw. Um, and you can see the weed load is pretty light here. And then these I weeded and uh, did not mulch and you can see a, a huge difference. Um, over here we have our raspberries that have been picked clean but obviously I haven't um, come back and pruned them and then trellis the young branches yet. That's something I have to do <laughs> when I find the time. Uh, and then wider over here we have uh, something that I call it's a kale mustard hybrid. I planted my kale and my mustards uh, too close together one year and they hybridized and so this is um, it's got the, the texture of kale, it's real, it's real robust, but it has that uh, sharp mustard flavor, so it's really good, it's one of my favorite things. And I have tons of seeds, if you want any, let me know. I'd be happy to try, try and get some to you. Yeah. Beyond this are more beds. Uh, there's some squash growing back here, but for the most part, these beds were abandoned this year and I, I haven't been able to uh, keep up with them. I also didn't have anything to plant in them yet because just how it worked out. Um, we also have a couple more apple trees along this fence line um, that we're currently in the process of installing. There's a lot of work in progress. We've been here three years, but uh, if any of you know what this property was like beforehand, this was all brush. So this is uh, a heavy weed load and uh, it's been a lot of work to get it where it is now. So let's keep going and I'll show you the chicken coop. <laughs> so this is actually how I control where the chickens go, or this is one of the ways. This is a fence and you can see all the the branches I put on top because one of the chickens realized she could jump up here and then jump out and wreak havoc in my garden. Um, so this whole fence line will move and closes next to the chicken coop over there and then the chickens are closed off and they can only go into their backyard. Right now it's in this position so that they can go into the berry area uh, and take down a lot of the weed load that's built up there over the year. So I'm going to come through here. And come over to the chicken coop. This is uh, one of my favorite things that I've built so far. Um, the posts and the timber uh, came from a spruce that was dead on the property when we moved in. So we split it and rived it and built a timber frame chicken coop. The walls are made out of wattle and daub, uh, which is an old way of building up walls before we had drywall and dimensional lumber. If you go to our YouTube page um, and look for chicken coop, timber frame chicken coop part one and two, you can watch us you can watch the whole process of building this thing. It was a lot of fun. Um, but the chickens live in here, and right now I have this door open, uh, but they also have another door here, which lets out into their backyard. Right now it's closed because I want to give the plants back there a chance to recover from having the chickens digging through them and eating them all summer. Um, once the winter comes, this closes, and then the chickens go back there again. Um, in there we've got lay boxes, uh, a, food, a food hopper, water, um, and <coughs> 
excuse me, I'm talking, uh, and a roost. Um, we also have water outside and then chicken scratch that we give them in the mornings. So now let's go back out and around and we'll go look at the bees. So back beyond uh, the chicken yard, um, I've got a shed. And in the shed, I've got three beehives. And they're back behind some screen. Uh, but this is kind of a Slovenian or Swiss style bee shed that I got, was inspired by uh, the bee shed at the New Glarus Historical uh, Village, uh, which is in New Glarus, Wisconsin. You can check them out uh, when they're open. Um, but uh, you put the bees inside the shed and then they have a lot less uh, elements to contend with. You can see the cool barn square my uh, stepmom gave us for, the, for our shed. This is actually barn paint. And I mean like real barn paint from a hundred years ago. Um, the red coloring is from rust. And uh, the reason barns are red, and maybe you already know this, is that people would take rust, linseed oil, flour, water, and, uh, and a drying agent. They'd boil it all together and they'd paint with it. And the rust is a microbial inhibitor. It keeps mold and, um, and other uh, bacteria and other things from growing on the wood and breaking it down and rotting it. So it's actually a, a growth inhibitor uh, as much as it is a paint and it was uh, fun to make basically everything in there was edible not that I think you'd want to eat rust um, But it gives a nice a nice kind of burgundy color uh, to the shed that I uh, that I really like and then from here back It's mostly brush um, Although I will show you uh, Lauren's butterfly garden um, and a couple other things. So let's head this way So as we come back over here, we can see Lauren's butterfly garden and she can talk more about this or maybe post some pictures. Uh, but she has all kinds of stuff that a lot of it has uh, started to go down for the season, like Yay. world milkweed, yeah, Mexican hats, uh, and, and lots of other things that I don't know as much about. So, And as we continue to walk down our long, narrow yard, uh, we come to what used to be the chicken fence uh, when the chickens were in this back area. Uh, but under the chicken fence, I've got some logs that were inoculated with mushroom spawn. So we're just patiently waiting for some uh, shiitake mushrooms to grow there. And then at the very back of our property, we've got our pile of wood chips that we keep working through. Um, we use these to mulch paths, uh, to compost, all kinds of things. These are really important um, for, for everything we do here. Uh, and thanks to the Malins for delivering those regularly. Uh, if we step out to Church Street on the back of our property, we find another area with full sun, and here I'm trying to colonize it. I put down cardboard and then mulch, and now I've planted squash and pumpkins and things in it. Um, hopefully next year I'll be able to use this as a full-on grow bed uh, because it gets so much nice sun uh, back on Church Street. So now, uh, that's basically our property. However, um, I've gotten some other space from our neighbor, uh, Phil and Lynn, who have let us grow uh, some on their properties. So why don't we head over there? So back here is what uh, we call the, the, north, the back 40, uh, which is essentially uh, a tenth of an acre here uh, where uh, I put an electric fence and a high fence around it to keep out the rabbits, raccoons, and deer, which got everything I grew in there last year. Um, and I've got corn, beans, and squash growing. Uh, this is where we grew a lot of our field potatoes. Uh, we grew turnips as well as we tried to grow oats. Last year the oats grew really well, but this year they only came up really short and I don't know what the reason was. So we've got all those plants out here. Um, I've had to cut down most of the early season crops, the peas, the turnips, the oats. Um, the flax is still growing, um, but I'm going to be planting out the faster growing cabbages and other uh, brassicas that uh, will grow into the fall. Uh, after I harvest the squash and the corn. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do in this area, uh, but uh, things are moving along really well. And then over on this side, uh, Phil and I uh, grew potatoes, kind of a joint effort. Um, he had the extra space and the extra potatoes, and so we put in a thousand potato plants here. And uh, if you want some potatoes, we have extra. Uh, we kind of grew them on purpose because we didn't know what the economic situation would be. Uh, this late in the year and going into the fall. So we have a whole field of potatoes here. They're um, planted on the surface with mulch, so they're really easy to dig. If you want to come gather some, you're welcome to. Uh, just let 
meter fill no uh, first so we can kind of point you to the best the best spots and uh, yeah but they're they're free for the taking so let us know uh, if you're interested for sure that's exactly why we grew them is to give away to our neighbors um, and then I also got um, about a third of, of the greenhouse the hoop house here uh, to grow in so let's go inside and check that out so in the greenhouse we have tomatoes and until about a week ago this was all full of cucumbers but we've already put up over 50 quarts of cucumbers and pickles so we are done with cucumbers. I cut most of them down um, and in their place I've planted peas. So those peas will come up as the fall comes on. Uh, the peas you saw in the greenhouse at, back at our house, those will get planted into empty spaces here that don't germinate very well. I've also got some uh, coal plants, so I've got uh, bok choy planted here um, and there. These are some banana peppers that are continuing to grow. Over here we have all kinds of tomatoes and these are all volunteer tomatoes uh, from my potting soil. I don't heat my potting soil enough uh, to kill all the plants, uh, all the seeds that are in it, so I get a lot of volunteer tomatoes. They just happen to do really well and so I plant them over here and then I won't save the seeds from these. I'll save the seeds from the San Marzano's, German Johnson's and other tomatoes on my property next door. These uh, will simply be volunteer extra tomatoes. So here we have about 60 to 70 tomato plants in here. Some of them are cherries, some of them are more of a brandy wine type. We've also got some paste tomatoes um, going. Uh, here we have a little bit of basil. And then, so that's bok choy back there. And then from here on, it's going to be a uh, late flat Dutch cabbage. So these are gonna be some of the longer growing cabbages that need a little bit more protection uh, later into the season. The water uh, comes as a, this is a good idea by Phil, the water runs off and into these buckets. And then I use the buckets to irrigate everything. And to simplify watering all these tomato plants, I actually built a canal here with check dams. And so every day when I water the tomatoes, all I have to do is dump five gallons of water here on the side, it runs down and irrigates the roots of all these tomatoes. Um, the tomatoes are fertilized primarily with ash for potassium and then uh, chicken compost and also urine for nitrogen. Um, there was a Finnish study that showed that urine and ash uh, produce just as much uh, tomato fertilizer as store-bought and it's also free so that's nice. Um, you can actually see I have the yellowing of the leaves here um, and that's because I'm manganese deficient and I haven't put any Epsom salts on them yet and really manganese is such a minimal sort of uh, input that I'm not too too worried about it um, so what the plants are doing is they're stealing manganese from these younger um, these older leaves and bringing them up to the green top so that's why that's why I have some yellowing here these are all gonna get trimmed off in the next week anyway as we move farther down the greenhouse you can see here we still have some cucumbers just to continue uh, getting seeds that's why we have some really big cucumbers and also just for snacking for the rest of the year. Uh, more tomatoes here. In each one of these boxes is a sweet potato plant. So we're hoping to get some good uh, sweet potato yields this year. Uh, they should be easy to harvest because we'll just lift the block up and dig through looking for potatoes. Um, and then here we have hatch chilies. Um, some of my family live in New Mexico and they're really big into hatch chilies there. So uh, we decided to try and grow some and they're growing really well actually in this greenhouse. Um, and I'm kind of excited for harvesting more of those. We had some in the burritos that we ate last night, so they were really good. And we've got more tomatoes over here, just to have a little more. We do have one um, eggplant. Uh, we were supposed to have more, but they didn't germinate very well. We've also got some basil. Over here I have two uh, plants that love a lot of heat. We've got both uh, okra and a fig tree. Uh, the okra are getting a little bit of Japanese beetle pressure but uh, overall they're doing pretty well here um, and then the fig tree is in a pot and so this will come into the greenhouse or the house itself uh, once the fall comes along. Well that's the tour for the week. Um, I'm gonna head back into our property here from uh, Linen Fields but you can get an idea of everything we're growing here, what it looks like mid-summer, a lot of weeds that I'm still dealing with uh, but also we're getting a lot of produce which is nice. Um, looking forward to the fall and a lot more brassicas and uh, sauerkraut and stuff like that. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed our little tour and we'll be back next week, uh, I think, with a video about all the different ways that we're processing tomatoes because that's really what's 
what's coming in right now. So, thanks for joining us.